All right, thank you. Our next press conference is with uh, Gonzaga head coach Mark Few. Coach, uh, congratulations on the return to Portland. Uh, and begin with an opening statement, and then we will open it to the room for questions. Uh, well, it's awesome to be back to another uh, NCAA tournament, especially one that uh, you know what we'll have fans at. Uh, it'll be great to to walk out on the floor and 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 see the the real and feel the real March Madness environment. So I think all of us are are so excited and feel so blessed to be able to uh, to get back to that. Uh, you know, from our team and our program standpoint, it's great to be able to come to Portland. Uh, we've obviously had some great memories here. We've got a lot of myself being an Oregonian and 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 players from Oregon, and then just some real real uh, uh, wonderful connections down here and and. Uh, uh, but then you flip the script and, and you start watching tape and, and, uh, you know, some real apprehensiveness with, uh, a Georgia state squad kind of scratching my head and shocked that they're a 16 seed. I didn't, I don't really see that. Uh, and so we know we're in for, uh, just like you are all the time in the NCAA tournament, it's going to be a really, really, uh, tough, hard fought game. And we're going to have to play very good to, uh, to move on. Lindsay. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Hi, Mark. Uh, I asked your players this. What is your favorite Chet highlight from the season? It can be something that happened in practice that we haven't seen. Uh, you know, I mean, Chet does a lot of eye-popping things, and then he does some real head-scratching things. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I guess it depends on what kind of mood I'm in. Uh, uh, best thing about Chet, I'm telling you, is he's so coachable, and he's such a hard worker. Probably my greatest highlight is to walk out there the morning after a game. He's already got a full sweat going that morning, you know, working on something, whether it's his, you know, his basketball skills or in the weight room with Travis or, or even watching film on the next opponent. He's, a, he's incredibly driven and, and he's got a plan. So uh, maybe something like that. It's kind of boring, but from a coach's standpoint, that's, it's always great to see. Hey, Coach Austin White from the Portland Tribune, right here. Uh, you know, you touched on your opening statement, some connections to Portland, uh, you know, with Matt, Ben, and uh, your assistant, Coach Brian. Yep. You know, how special is it for those three to be here playing a March Madness game in Portland? And what have they kind of brought to the program, especially Coach Mickelson? Uh, hey, I think it's special to them, special to me. I mean, heck, I grew up two hours from here. It was like always the biggest thing in the world to be able to come up to Portland, maybe one or two days a year, you know, whether it's for a state tournament or something. And, and you're just in awe of the old Coliseum. And, and, uh, <clears throat> so I think it, it's great. It's great for them to get back home around their families. It certainly makes for easy travel for our fans. Um, uh, and in regards to B Mike, I mean, he, I, I think he is the true zag cause he's so very understated and so humble. And he's had just an enormous impact on our program you know, as much as anybody has over the years. He's, he's a unbelievable uh, relationship developer and uh, ferocious recruiter. I think that's just, I don't think people understand that just how many uh, of the great players we've had have been probably, you know, at least influenced the most by B Mike in the recruiting process. And he's got a real, real analytical uh, feel uh, that has helped me over the years because I was not the greatest analytics guy at the start of this whole movement, still probably in the lower percentile, but uh, uh, he's great at game planning, great at scouting and, 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 and excellent at player development. Orlando. Uh, Orlando Sanchez, KGW TV, Portland. Uh, along the same lines that you mentioned at the top of this, being an Oregonian, being from here, and also having quite a few players that are from the Pacific Northwest on the roster, uh, can you describe being able to, one, be in front of fans, but two, knowing that there's a lot of family that's here, how more significant is that? Well, I think that's one of the best things and one of the best moves over the years. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what this is. Is this our 23rd or 25th or something? straight year in a tournament, which is just such a awesome accomplishment by all our guys and something I'm probably most proud of, of everything we've been able to do. Cause it is just so hard to get to this 
tournament that I think is the greatest sporting event in, in the world. But the coolest thing, greatest move I think the NCAA did was having, you know, if you're in that first four seeding group somewhere, you get to stay closer to home and just makes it so much easier for friends, for families, for our fans. And it really, really, really rewards teams for just battling and slugging it out over the course of four and a half months uh, and giving them something other than just a number on a line. And uh, so certainly, you know, we knew early on this year when we looked at it way back in September that Portland was, uh, you know, one of the host cities. And I think that was a, that was a goal for all of us to get here. Brenna Green, Prem2 News. Uh, you said you were scratching your head at Georgia State being yep. a 16 seed. Why? Because I've seen them on tape and watched them. And, and, you know, they're just, they're also, they come from a conference that ordinarily doesn't, uh, uh, it's not a 16 seed conference. Uh, they're very experienced. I think they were picked to win their league at the start of the year and just had some COVID issues. And then if you really want to look at the analytics and some analytics are almost 90 points higher than, than uh, uh, some of the other teams that were seated 16 and us being the number one overall, it's just, again, I'm not sure. I think the committee did a great job breaking down the, the, all the top four seats across the regions and, and, and even probably, you know, that's probably the most important aspect when you're in the, the committee room that, and then the you know, last four in and first four out. And I think they didn't get as good a job as they could do on that, but it's just, yeah, that's a head scratcher. This is not a 16 seed. And we've played plenty of 16 seeds over the years. Lindsay. Uh, Mark, you mentioned with you, Mike, that he's had a huge influence on your program. Obviously there are a couple other coaches around here who have two, including Leon Rice, who you've probably passed in the yeah. hallway and yeah. Tommy in Arizona. Yep. How much are you able to, talk to them during the season? Do you check in on their scores? Do you ever watch them just as a friend and a supporter? Yeah, absolutely. We talk pretty much every day or close to it. Um, I have another uh, guy that's huge with our program, Ray Jelletti, who uh, was at the University of St. Louis. And, and uh, so, yeah, and then I actively watch their games as a fan and a friend uh, whenever we can. I mean, we're certainly and the family's very much engaged in that. When I come home, sometimes they're all fired up because either Arizona or Boise State's on, or Long Beach State, or or Colorado, or you know all the all the friends in our uh, uh, that are very very close to us. And again, you know in Leon's case, they're like family, and Tommy's the same. Our families literally grew up together, and our kids have, were raised together. So uh, it's pretty special. This is a crazy profession, and it. Most cases, you're not allowed that, uh, you know, just that opportunity. And, and we've been so blessed to all be at Gonzaga. And, and, and uh, you know, the way we run our program is we let our kids run around on the side or just run wildly around the arena while we're practicing, which is fine by me. And, and uh, I think it's, it's, it's just been fun to see the kids grow up together like that. Dave Bowling, Spokesman Review. Uh, coach, how, how, in what ways is this team different from the 22 or whatever that preceded it? Its personality, its style of play, anything that jumps out at you? I mean, I look, every team's different. You know, I mean, I probably the, the, the least re reported or least talked about aspect of this team is just how much we lost from last year. We have three guys that are in the NBA off last year's team. Uh, and, and two of them were, you know, had been with us a long, long time and Corey and Joel and were great players, but they were also kind of the heart and soul of our program. And then, then to lose such just a, you know, a flying comet of a player in person in, uh, in uh, Jalen, uh, that was a lot. And we had, we had a lot of new faces and, and I think that, the great thing about this year's team is how easily they assimilated together and how they gave up different aspects of their game for the good of the team. And, and uh, you know, from Chet to, to Rozier to even guys that, you know, hadn't really done much 
a year ago, Julian Strother stepped in, Anton Watson stepped in to have, a, you know, just a great uh, uh, run this year. So I think that to me, that's the big, the biggest story there. Tyson. In, in regards to uh, Tyson Alger, I-5 corridor hey. over here. Um, in regards to Matthew Lang, what's it like for you when you get to put a guy on scholarship that had been a walk on for you? And then also, what did he what has he done throughout his career to be able to get to that point for you? Um, Matt's been great. Matt, Matt's another true zag who just gives you everything he's got in practice. He's he's a very, very good player. I mean, he could easily play at, you know, other programs uh, throughout the country. He's really, really developed. Uh, you know, over his time with us to where, I mean, he's a handful in practice. He was torching us pretty good yesterday. So uh, um, that comes from a great program, Jesuit high. Um, and then we've had a lot of Jesuit guys over the years that have had huge effects on our program. Brian Michelson to Kyle Wiltshire to, you know, to now Matt and, and uh, uh, you know, comes from a great family. And it's, it's, uh, it's awesome to be able to reward a kid um, it's complicated in this day and age because the transfer portal is such an important aspect to fill in your roster. So you're always kind of waiting around to see what's going to happen there. Unfortunately, uh, you know, we had one that we weren't able to use. So we gladly and, and uh, we're excited to give it to uh, Matt. Keith Oso, KXOY. Coach, you guys have raised the bar so high that there's only really one thing left to achieve as far as this tournament goes. What's that balance like for this being the greatest tournament in the world? And and there's people that that you guys are the number one overall seed for the second year in a row. It doesn't seem like it's a big deal. What are they going to do in March? You know, what's that balance like to to understand that, but to remind people, I guess, that the other 30 games matter too. Yeah, hey Keith, I I just think just to not buy into that narrative. I mean, I I certainly don't, um, and I do everything I can to. To make sure our players don't obviously the people around us within the athletic department and and you know those of us that are close none of us buy into that because we're out there battling and we understand all the people that didn't make it i mean i just look around the pacific northwest i mean and, or even out west who, who who was fortunate enough to to make the tournament uh you know let alone get get a high seed so uh um, we feel blessed to be able to do that. The number one seed is, is something we do cherish, uh, because it just shows, you know, you're the best out of everybody for four and a half months. You, you really, really earned this, this, this thing we start tomorrow is just a three week crap shoot, man. You gotta be really good, but you gotta be lucky too. Uh, and those are two different entities. Um, you know, we're at the point now where you're right. I mean, whether we haven't won it or whether we had won a championship, we want to win this thing as bad as anybody. Uh, but we're also, I feel smart enough and balanced enough to really cherish uh, the accomplishment that we had, not only this year, but in years past. These will be our last two questions, Gary. Uh, Kerry Eggers, uh, KerryEggers.com, Mark. Another Portland kid, Ben Gregg. Uh, can you talk about his development as a freshman? Yeah. Hey, Ben's, Ben's been interesting because he he came out you know early with all the COVID situations and everything down here. It was uh, he was able he's smart enough and organized enough to to come early, and he had a real adjustments last year. I mean he jumps on a team that was rolling and number one team in the country and old, and here's a you know high school kid coming in halfway through and he really did a a nice job dealing with all that. And I know it was hard. He's homesick and as all of us would be. Uh, but he, he's, he's behind some really, really, really good players, but he's got a bright future at, at, uh, GU. He's done a great job. He's battled through some kind of tough injuries. I had a pretty severe ankle sprain. So that's been kind of limiting him, uh, you know, this last month or so, but, uh, um, yeah, again, you just, again, Zag, if you just stick with the plan and hang in there, usually good things happen. There's just so many guys throughout the years on our roster that can, can attest to that. And I definitely put Ben in that category. Last question. Julian Minnesota KZI here in Eugene. Mark, getting to play at your home state, what does the Crestwell community mean to you? And do you have a favorite Crestwell memory, I guess? 
well, I grew up watching KEZI. It's good to know you guys are still in business. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> don't feel quite as old. Uh, hey, look, I mean, it's, it's just awesome to be able to grow up in a small town. Cresswell is, you know, obviously we still get back there whenever we can. My mom and dad are still there as well as my brother. And, uh, you know, my sisters are spread out, um, in Oregon also. And, and, um, no, I had great memories there and wouldn't have changed anything. Um, obviously growing up, the son of a minister was, was awesome. And especially in a small town and, and just got some dear, dear friends that are still friends. And, and, uh, I, I could never pick just one memory from there because I had so many good ones. All right, Coach Few, thank you very much. Good luck tomorrow. Yep, you got it. Reminder, everyone, that the press conference recording will be available in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.verit1.com, and transcripts provided by ASAP will be posted shortly. Uh, we have a bit of a break. Our next availability will be with St. Mary's, and that will be at 